Look, progressives warned Democrats about this, but this Tara Reid story, it's not going to go away any time soon. And it's only going to get worse for Joe Biden as the evidence mounts. Now, before we had the evidence that I'm about to get to, I believed Tara Reid when I heard her Me Too story. I listened to the podcast that she went on with Katie Halper, and I thought that everything she said made sense. You know, she was convincing. And what she's saying, it's not absurd. Like, we all see Joe Biden's inappropriate conduct, his touching of women and invasion of personal space. This isn't something that's super unbelievable. Numerous women have come out and explained how Joe Biden has made them feel uncomfortable. But I mean, these types of things, they at least, like, if you don't have evidence, then the information needs to be put out there. We have to investigate this as much as we can, have the authorities get involved. And at a minimum, Americans just have to know. But the problem is that the media didn't really touch the story until Bernie Sanders dropped out. We have individuals, Me Too activists like Alyssa Milano, claiming that Bernie Sanders supporters were trying to weaponize this story against Joe Biden. And, you know, it's really disappointing that Democrats aren't being consistent. Because we really don't have a reason to not believe Tara Reid. Oftentimes, victims in these types of stories, they have nothing to gain and everything to lose. I mean, look at what happened with Dr. Christine Blasey Ford when she came out with her accusations against uh, Brett Kavanaugh. Her life was ruined. She couldn't return to her home because she faced so many death threats. So Tara Reid could have remained silent. She's been silent for decades, but she chose to speak out. Maybe she wanted some closure. Maybe she just wanted the American people to know. But what matters is that these claims are taken seriously. And up until this point, they haven't been. Not by the media, not by the Democratic Party, and not by Joe Biden himself. But that's going to change very soon. Because they can't not take it seriously, because this story is getting very serious, if it wasn't already serious for you. So, Tara Reid's mom called into Larry King Live in the 1990s, when he was on CNN, and, you know, she talked about this accusation. Tara Reid told her about what Joe Biden did, and even though she didn't name uh, Joe Biden, she referred to him as a prominent senator, and Tara Reid confirms that this was, in fact, her mom who called in. This is a key piece of evidence, because if people see this, they're going to realize that Tara Reid isn't just making this up to impact the 2020 election. This was something she was dealing with back in the 1990s. This isn't new. This is a real story. Take a look. We're back. A couple more phone calls on this very important topic. Our guests are former United States Senator Howard Baker, Richard Allen, former National Security Advisor, and Lois Romano of the Washington Post. San Luis Obispo, California. Hello. Yes, hello. Um, I'm wondering what um, uh, a, a staffer uh, would do, do besides go to the press in Washington. My daughter has just left there uh, after working for a prominent senator and could not get through with her problems at all. And the only thing she could have done was go to the press, and she chose not to do it out of respect for him. Or she had a story to tell, but out of respect for the person she worked for, she didn't tell it. That's true. Well, now, but these are the people who do come to the Lois Romanos, right? The mm -hmm. staff worker who says, I want to let you know about what's going this on either going with my on boss or the guy down the hall. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these people have a sense of obligation. They feel that this public official should be accountable if it's something wrong. They're whistleblowers to the... This is utterly devastating for Joe Biden. Career ending. And um, it's sad that... This wasn't taken seriously sooner, but you and I know why this wasn't taken seriously sooner. And, um, you know, this confirms a couple of things here. That Tara Reid did genuinely admire Joe Biden. She worked for him. She was a Democrat. And she didn't want to destroy his career. They were genuinely struggling with this. And also, you know, as Tara's mom pointed out, she didn't feel like she had any recourse. Like, they didn't know who to talk to. The only one was the media, where she would act as a whistleblower. So, this is clearly referencing Tara Reid's accusations. This is huge. This is a really big deal. And there's even more evidence, because Tara Reid's neighbor corroborates the fact that she told uh, someone about this. Now, she told multiple people, her brother, her late mother, but also her neighbor, and 
her neighbor is saying she was told about this in the 1990s when it happened. So again, this isn't just something that she's choosing to conveniently do now. She told people about it at the time that it happened and she just never spoke out. So as HuffPost's Haley Miller explains, Linda Lacasse told Business Insider in a report published Monday that Reed confided in her about the alleged assault in 1995 or 1996, when the two women lived in the same apartment complex in Morro Bay, California. This happened, and I know it did because I remember talking about it, Lacasse told the outlet. Reed was one of at least eight women last year to publicly accuse Biden of inappropriate touching. She said at the time she worked in his Senate office when she was in her mid-20s and that he would make her uncomfortable by running his fingers up her neck or putting his hand on her shoulder. So now we're seeing more details about the pattern of inappropriate behavior, with which is something that lines up with what we see from Joe Biden on TV him inappropriately touching women. So often that eight women spoke out. Now, some women have said that this didn't bother them the way that Joe Biden interacted with them, but enough women did to where eight of them spoke out. So it's not just that Joe Biden allegedly sexually assaulted her, right? And penetrated her with his fingers. He was making her feel uncomfortable by touching her inappropriately, as we've seen him do ourselves with our very own eyes. So this is a very serious story. And if Democrats ever wanted to be taken seriously again, they would call on him to drop out because he has not officially clenched the nomination. He hasn't reached that magic 1991 number. Half the states haven't voted yet. Are they really going to do this? Are they really going to nominate an alleged rapist? This is unbelievable. This is unbelievable. And guess what? Republicans are capitalizing on this story. You thought that Bernie Sanders supporters, Alyssa Milano, were trying to weaponize this story? This is going to be weaponized like you'd never imagine by Republicans who don't actually care about the details, who aren't principled. Because Trump Jr. is already tweeting about this. He responded to a Nancy Pelosi tweet that she made about Dr. Christine Blasey Ford. And, you know, he tweeted, far too few people are recognizing Tara Reid's sheer bravery in sharing her story today. And as you can see, I mean, he's basically using her words against her and pointing to her hypocrisy. But let's be clear, Trump Jr. doesn't actually care about Tara Reid's allegations. He's also a hypocrite. He has no room to talk. He accused Democrats of politicizing the allegations against Brett Kavanaugh. And he even made fun of that story on Instagram. But because Democrats didn't take this story seriously, now you have people who aren't principled, who just don't care. They're going to beat Joe Biden over the head with this story until this election is over. And they did this to themselves because we had this information before the primary was over, but the media didn't want to talk about it. Democrats didn't want to speak out. I mean, we saw what was said to Al Franken what happened, he was forced to resign for doing less than what Joe Biden is accused of doing. And they're going to do it. They're going to go through with the nomination of an accused rapist, giving Americans the option between a rapist and a rapist. Which do you prefer? Someone who uh, raped more or less? It's, it's truly morally reprehensible. And, you know, this is just a game. You know, it's really showing people that nobody cares about anything. Everyone in Washington, D.C., they're just motivated by politics. If their team does something bad, they're not going to say anything. But if the other team does something bad, they're going to make a huge case about it. It's really, really disgusting. And it's honestly heartbreaking to see this because this Me Too story... Uh, or this Me Too movement, rather, is important, right? I think that women should feel empowered to speak out against men in power who abuse their positions of power. I mean, this story symbolizes everything that the Me Too movement has tried to be. But Democrats who purported to represent that movement are not helping women beat this system of oppression against women from men in power. They're just choosing to sit on it. In fact, conveniently, Nancy Pelosi came out with an endorsement of Joe Biden and, you know, I don't have to remind you of the significance of this to have the highest ranking woman in power conspicuously choose to endorse Joe Biden now as the evidence piles up. And here's the thing, as a Bernie Sanders supporter, let me just say this. 
I am not under the, you know, delusion that Democrats are going to say, all right, Joe Biden's been accused of rape. Let's bring back Bernie Sanders. That's not what they're going to do. But what they can do is they can actually endorse the idea of democracy playing out because we still have a lot of states that haven't voted yet and encourage Joe Biden to step down. Like, I get that people made their choice for Joe Biden. More people voted for Joe Biden. He got millions more votes than Bernie Sanders, any other candidate, right? So yes, democracy is something that we have to factor in, but most voters didn't know about these allegations when they voted for Joe Biden, when they made their selection between Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders or Joe Biden and Bernie and other candidates. So this is deeply irresponsible. And if they did want to beat Donald Trump, they would encourage Joe Biden to step down or at least get him to commit to step down if he's elected in favor of letting his VP win. I don't know. But just to not do anything, it, it, it's not acceptable. It's not acceptable. Because now, whenever Democrats rightfully call out, you know, a Republican who's been accused of something like this, nobody's going to take them seriously. Why would they? Because now they're proving the Republicans right. So nobody stands for anything. And Democrats are just going to go through with this. You know, rather than trying to be responsible, they double down and they endorse Joe Biden. All right, but um, evidence is mounting and people are going to have questions about this. So at a minimum, Democrats should at least speak out either for or against Joe Biden, at least say something about this. So they tell us whether or not they stand for anything, communicate to us, you know, indirectly that they actually do believe in all the things they said about believing women and me too. But they're not going to do that because this party stands for nothing and they probably don't even really care about winning. So they're going to run Joe Biden, an alleged rapist, and then they're going to blame the left and everyone else but themselves when they lose, if they lose. It's disgusting.